You may have been told that ISO is a camera's sensitivity to light, but that's not really the whole story. In this video, we're going to look at what ISO really is, how it affects your video, and some tips on how to set it properly. ISO is actually an acronym for an organization known as the International Organization for Standardization. And they came up with a way to measure an object's sensitivity to light. And as far as cameras are concerned, this just over time became known as a setting called ISO. Now, originally, this setting was really developed and applied to cameras that were using film because that's the technology that existed at the time. And you would measure a film's sensitivity to light in ISO or also known as the speed of the film. If you're familiar with film cameras, you may have heard the term speed before. And depending on the conditions that you were shooting in, you would choose a different speed film that matched the conditions. So if you had more light then you would choose a lower speed film with a lower ISO number. And if you were filming in darker conditions, you would choose a film that had a higher ISO no number or a higher speed film. On modern digital cameras, the sensitivity of the sensor can't actually be changed. The sensitivity is a fixed value based off of the manufacturing methods and the transistors used and various other electronic components, but the sensitivity is what it is when it comes from manufacturing. When we adjust the ISO sensitivity, what we're actually doing is adjusting or, or boosting and amplifying the signal that the sensor is sending to the analog to digital converter or basically the, the information that's being sent from the sensor to the camera's computer. We're just boosting that signal. Now, one caveat that I do need to address because I'm sure it'll come up is that there are cameras that have multiple different uh, what's known as base ISOs, dual layer sensors, multi-layer sensors. There's lots of different technologies out there that allow you to actually have multiple layers of sensitivity, but those layers still have a fixed value. So if you have a dual layer sensor, the values of those dual layers will always be fixed based at how they were manufactured. So what does ISO actually do for us if it's not adjusting the sensor sensitivity to light? Well, the first thing that we need to do is just take a quick look at the exposure triangle. We achieve proper exposure by adjusting the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. Now in video in particular, we're fairly limited with our shutter speed because we want to stay as close to the 180 degree rule as, as we can. And if you want to find out more about how shutter speed affects your video, I'll link a video down in the description on how shutter speed affects your video and just going more in depth into that topic. So once our shutter speed is set, that's where we go ahead and start adjusting our aperture. And we adjust our aperture based off of the depth of field or how much of the frame is in focused. If you want a very blurry background, then you're going to open up your aperture wider. And then we're going to make some minor adjustments to our aperture to get our exposure closer to where we want. Now, if we're very, very particular about where we want our aperture. We're going to be limited on how much we adjust it to get exposure where we want. And that's where ISO comes into play. If, our, if we're underexposed, then we start to raise our ISO to bring that exposure up. And if we're overexposed, then we can drop our ISO down. Now, shutter speed and aperture are actually physical attributes of the camera and the lens that are being changed to address how much light is actually hitting the sensor. Whereas ISO is a digital way of affecting the image. So it's taking the light data that's coming from the sensor and affecting it digitally to help us achieve the proper exposure. Before we continue on, we really need to address the elephant in the room, which is noise. Now, noise is the white and brightly colored pixels that kind of look like static in your image. And noise is really kind of the digital equivalent to film grain. However, film grain is actually, for some people, a desirable kind of look, whereas digital noise from your sensor is much less desirable these days. Now, every digital camera sensor has some level of noise. Uh, some are better than others depending on the megapixels of the sensor and just the technology used, how old the camera is. There's a lot of different factors that affect how much noise is natively on the sensor. But why do we get more noise when we raise the ISO? And it's simply because we're taking the signal that's already coming from the sensor and we're boosting it. So if you have a certain level of noise and you boost it, then naturally you're going to be able to see it more. It's not so much that you're creating more noise, it's more, it's more that you're making the noise that's there more visible. And this is why it's so important that we get proper exposure using the physical attributes of the camera, the shutter speed and the 
aperture as well as adding light if we need to so that we don't have to digitally boost the image and potentially make more visible noise. So we're gonna look at a couple of different examples of achieving proper exposure. In the first example, we're gonna use the ISO in camera to get the exposure where we want it. And in the second example, we're gonna take the same image and we're going to lift that up in post-production in the video editing software to get the similar type of exposure to what we were able to achieve in camera. This is the image that we're gonna be starting with. It's clearly underexposed. This is shot on the FX30 with the base ISO of 800 and shutter speed and aperture are set to where we want. No additional lighting is added and we're gonna go ahead and lift from here. In this first example, I raised the ISO from the base of 800 all the way up to 6400, which is not a base ISO of this camera. And in the upper left-hand corner, we can see how much noise there is but the exposure level looks pretty good. And in the second example, I just took the first clip that was underexposed, brought it into DaVinci Resolve, raised the exposure up to be similar to what we saw in the second clip, and didn't do any noise reduction or any other restoration. And we can see there's quite a bit more noise than we had when we used ISO to raise our exposure. So to wrap things up, we just need to remember that we're not actually adjusting the camera's sensor sensitivity to light when we're using ISO. We're just boosting the signal that it's already receiving. And so utilizing the physical attributes of our camera, we want to get as close to proper exposure as we can. Now, knowing this, adjusting the ISO is still a great way to get proper exposure. Modern cameras have much less noise than in years past, and they have powerful onboard processing that allow you to do things like noise reduction and utilize color profiles or picture profiles to get proper exposure and contrast and color based off of what you're shooting. So thanks for watching. Go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons and let me know down in the comments if there's any future topics you'd like me to cover.